this country is at war. Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. This was their final tower. War is immensely disruptive. There are huge flows of people from continent to continent, and as well as Allied soldiers returning home at the time, thousands of prisoners of war were also coming back. We've followed three British prisoners of war as they travelled for the first time back to their prison camp in Poland. Lambsdorff, which was then in Germany, by the way, was the country's largest camp. By the beginning of 1945, it held over 57,000 men. More than a third of them were British. I came to, and uh, an arm came from the back of me and sort of put a cigarette in my mouth. I looked up to say thank you, naturally. The biggest German I had ever seen in full uniform. Germans just surrounded us, you know. That was it. And then there was a feeling of being a prisoner, slightly being ashamed, you know. But that feeling went after a while. All the life... <laughs> after the camp is like a dream, whereas the prison camp and all that is very real. I want to see it again, you know, just to bring some of the memories back and the people we were with. Part of it, I suppose, is perhaps to lay ghosts, if you like. It was a very important moment. I didn't know it would be like this, but this is where we arrived. We got out from our compartment, and the soldiers got out from behind, and we were lined up and marched off straight through the woods. It was terrible, very emotional. Thick woods, Thick wood. Fine. but the camp itself was just flat and barracks. Yeah, yeah no trees. Well, barracks, no, I no, say. No. They weren't very good barracks. <laughs> <laughs> what was flat ground with uh, huts in it and thousands of men and watchtowers and barbed wire been replaced by trees. lice. We used to run down the seams with a cigarette end and you know that used to kill the lice off. We had fowl soup which was uh, made of um, swedes I think mainly. The bread was made of some kind of god knows what material but in the end I, I liked it very much because it was very filling. I was in and out of Lambstone on different working parties. Some were hellish, carrying concrete blocks on our shoulders and whatnot. If it was the winter time, we were clearing snow off the railway lines. I say we, we've come through it, haven't we? I'm still alive. The Russians cut deep into eastern Germany. Some 30,000 men were forced to march from Lansdorf, about 600 miles under appalling conditions, being ill-treated and starved all the way. Boots were frozen solid. You didn't take them off, that was the only answer. We could look at somebody, and if he'd given up, you gave him three days, and it, that'd be the end of it. I got more or less into that situation, but we ended up at Falling Bostel. I weighed about five and a half to six stone. We knew it was over. There they all were with a, a great big tank. That was absolutely amazing. <laughs>
Germans with their hands on their heads. We just <laughs> went to pieces. <laughs>
This was the biggest camp in the uh, German Army Command Number Three. Es war, es wurde 1939 bereits. It was started in 1939. Und es begann mit Zelten. Polnische Gefangene mussten die Zelte hier aufbauen. And there were no, when they came here, there were no barracks at all. And the first prisoners were Polish prisoners after they were captured in 1939. And they didn't have any barracks and they put them in huge tents. And just imagine 400 people in one tent. You kept each other alive yes. in, in the dark days. Yes. And the maximum number who were brought here was 15,000 Italians, and that was in that was in 43. Right in the winter of 41, 42, uh, this uh, fever outbreak killed between two and three thousand Russians during the winter. Yeah, it's good. No? Okay. Just look like kids somewhere. As you see them decently dressed, yeah. that presumably, as I see it, from my own experiences, that was the first consignment of new clothing sent by England to Germany. Right. The Germans give us nothing. To uh, Voxlav. Go there and graves up, did you say? I think they are both. Yeah. 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 The same thing. They're not British. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he missed the br briefing which said you shouldn't say anything at all except your name, rank and number. He missed that. And he didn't have enough now, I'm afraid, to work out that if, if he got, gave his name, that rank and number, that would be enough for his family to know if they were going to tell them, and if they weren't, they'd have to sweat it out. Beautiful camp by the lake in the woods. <laughs> Is that what they called in it? The pine forest. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Having a marvellous time. Yes, no, no, Smell wood smoke? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So you got me in your pocket in case there's that moment. Yeah. It was all in a heap in the wagon. All over and all in a heap. And when the doors opened, the Germans were screaming, dragging them out of the arms. I opened my eyes, the air made me open the eyes. I pulled to the open, fell out, passed out. All I knew was. I've got a thud in my body and when I... But what I said to you, may I, may I drop dead every second, I told you the truth. When did you get into the mind? It was very fair. What? It was very fair. Well, when they realised it's time and on, that, uh, I mean, the norm, the norm when I was working, we were in bad, and it was a terrible station. I was captured by the folks too. Hendekhoff, for you the war is over. And the next thing I was taken to 
do like your friends uh, interrogate. Lady's going to come and join you. Oh, she yeah. lives in the uh, house next door. Oh. She's 91. Right. Was here when you came off the you're train. Doing very well. Zikora, yes. Zikora. 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 How do you do? prisoner of war. It is a melancholy state. You are in the power of your enemies. You owe your life to his humanity, your daily bread to his compassion. You must obey his orders, await his pleasures, possess your soul in patience. The days are long, hours crawl by like paralytic centipedes. Moreover, the whole atmosphere of prison, even the best and most regulated of prisons, is odious. Companions quarrel about nothing at all and get the least possible enjoyment from each other's company. You feel a constant humiliation at being fenced by railings and barbed wire, watched by armed guards and webbed by a triangle of regulations and restrictions. Winston Churchill's writing, 1899.
think Mr. Winfield, Ernest Winfield, was very surprised when Peter and Mark, Peter Blake and Mark Mead, were chatting together and it apparently turned out that they were sharing the same hut in, sorry? Same table in the same hut. The same, well there, there you go. I mean, th this is extraordinary. What's been really striking is how modest these men are. One of them was a fencing mate constructor, a metro, metro diamond in the foreign legion. He taught them to fence with wooden swords in the prison war camp. And that took, kept, took that up when I came home as a student. And I fenced fine with the prison one. I feel like I was on the first thousand of them, really, which was quite a thing that the Germans never succeeded in in flying anything like that number ever at any time during the war. I landed in a field and I hid up in a corn, a corn stoop. Yeah. You know, the stoops, not, not, not the haystack, the hay stoop. And I climbed inside that and hid. And I thought in the morning, in the, at night time, sit, sit out there and see what was happening. And then try and escape. It was a very, I think it was a very unreal, uh, I'm not escaping too, you need to be much more physical, really, than me to escape. The first words I heard were, Hende Ho, Hende Ho, which I need to realize with hands up. So I came out with my hands up. And I said, For you, the war is over. It was only beginning the real hardship, I'm telling you. Oh, I've had unbelievable times.
reminded of our responsibility to those who died to make sure that what they died for, we in our time protect. Freedom, justice, respect for all peoples, regardless of creed, color or race. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Creator God, we give you thanks that amidst the forests and memories of Lambsdorff and Zagen we have walked. Aged men, proud and resolute, and relatives and friends in their stead, to lay claim to those stolen years of youth, to breathe in freedom air once fetid with sorrow, to bring the wealth of warm bodies, full stomachs and health to a place once so poor in mercy. And since those haunted days, we have vanquished tyranny, espoused and pursued democracy, and struggled to usher in the peace of our dreams. But more specially still for us, we have cradled the hearts of our children and cherished our grandchildren. We have loved and been loved. We have drunk the rich draught of laughter and conviviality. We have rested in mellow times in peace and quietness and woven the golden light of happiness within our days. And all this we have done, not for ourselves alone, but for those brave millions, lost friends and comrades, whose sacrifice brought the wicked to their knees and gave infinite treasures to our lives. And where now crumbled pillars and ruined barracks and tall trees are all that remain of the past, here and there arising secretly amidst the foliage of time, clusters of blue forget-me-nots dance in the summer breeze and bathe in the summer sun. So may we pledge before Almighty God this day that our beloved fallen will be always remembered, never forgotten, ever honoured in this world and in that which is to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.